Good evening, Cecil TV. I'm Grant Hanley, your political correspondent for tonight. And with me is Don Branch, Cecil County Council District 5 candidate. Don, thanks for coming to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, I'm sure a couple of people maybe have seen some Don Branch signs around and, and getting a feel for what you're doing and, and, you know, what you're running for. But maybe, you know, who is Don Branch, the why the Don Branch? So we're going to get into it. So okay. first things first, Don, can you tell us about your background, qualifications, and what you could bring to the County Council? Okay, I have been a resident of Cecil County for almost 20 years, moved here in 2004, raised a family here. I, during that time of living here, I was a small business owner for 15 years, and I was also on the school board for eight years, five of those years as president. I am the proud mom of two sons, an awesome daughter-in-law, and also three grandchildren that attend Cecil County Public Schools. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, maybe the biggest question is, why have you chosen to run for county council? I am trying to foster a positive climate back into the county and take away some of the politics and make it a good place to live. Uh, that includes being fiscally responsible and a conservative spender. I do not believe in throwing money away, but I do think we need to take care of the needs of our county. And I feel like there's been a, not, a lot of neglect lately. The roads, the schools, public safety, other government services are not being taken care of. I absolutely do not believe in raising taxes to do any of those things. Um, I have a history, my career has been about 30 years in finance, so I'm very familiar with how to read a budget, spend within your means. So okay. I thought I could make a positive difference. Great, that's wonderful. Well, we're going to jump into the county government itself and Cecil County. Cecil County as a whole, as a lot of our viewers know as they're driving around the county, has experienced significant residential and commercial development in the past few years. And honestly, from what we're seeing in projects with Southfields, we're seeing sports complexes in Elkton, we're seeing development in Northeast, that growth is going to keep going. You know, mm -hmm. a lot more growth is coming. And growth is great. It's beneficial to the tax base, and we have a comprehensive uh, plan and we have robust planning and zoning system at the county government. So if you were elected, how, what is your vision in terms of kind of managing that growth? I think growth is important for revenues, but it also has to be managed before we end up looking like our sister county, Hartford County, where I just feel like it was not managed properly and everywhere you drive to, there is just too much development. You didn't protect the farmlands and the other, what's important about Cecil County is the rural er areas. But while maintaining that, you do need the revenues to, to fund the needs of the county. So I know there are some state initiatives that force Cecil County into maintaining certain properties as they are. Right, right. And it's a delicate balance, you know, that's for sure. And you were just kind of talking about balancing Dawn, so it kind of teases up perfectly for the next question. One of the parts of Cecil County government is getting to a better future for Cecil County. And it's going to require some ongoing balancing act be between controlling costs and delivering effective services. You had mentioned we have education, we have public safety, we have roads, public works. We have all these various departments that, that need funding, good entities that need funding. As a member of the county council, how would you approach these competing priorities? Because, you know, it's only one budget. I think what we need most right now is a long-term strategic plan. You plan out for three, five, and ten years. You revisit that at the end of that specific time frame. What were you able to accomplish? Where did you miss and why? Reevaluate it, readjust, and then move forward. But without a long-term strategic plan, I feel like we're barely planning for tomorrow. We're just leaving more debt for our children. We are not taking care of priorities now. So the long-term strategic plan allows you to do that. Maybe it would be funding education a little bit more out of one budget. The following year, you know that public safety will be addressed a little bit more. But it's got to be out there out front so that all the residents of, Harf of Hartford, of all the residents of Cecil County know so that no one feels neglected. They understand that maybe we'll get a new school every 18 months. Public safety will, be, will address their needs every 18 months and so on. That's very interesting. A strategic plan. That sounds like a good idea. Citizens, parents, youth, retirees, all, all people with all different backgrounds, people with disabilities, people with all several walks of life, there are many challenges that they face. Now, all these people also happen to live in Cecil County. In your opinion, as a potential Cecil County Council member, what do you think is the role of county government in helping Cecil County people live their best lives? 
First of all, both the executive and the legislative branches of county government need to work together to make this a place to live and work for people that want to be here. Like you said, from your older people to your people with families to, to people that are even younger, this has to be a place that you choose to live here if your family's not already from here. That's what I did. I chose to live here as an adult. It, so in order to do that, you have to provide services. You have to, it has to be safe, whereas public safety comes in. You have to take care of the residents in order for people to want to be here. Certainly. Yeah. And what do you see, in my opinion, and what I've heard you know, throughout several county executives, several county councils, sometimes people think the county council is, is perfectly powered the way it is. Sometimes they feel the executive has too much power. And some people think maybe more of a harmony or a, kind of a coming together between the two branches need to happen more. If you are mm -hmm. a county council member, what would your relationship look like with the county executive's office? I think there definitely has to, there has to be a checks and balances system. Uh, the way the charter was um, elect, the voters elect put into existence the charter government in 2010. In 2012, it became effective. It I I um, saw the interview with uh, Councilman Meffley where he mentioned an amendment relating to the county council and the budget process. And I agree with him on that because the way it's set up now, the county executive gives the budget to the county council for their approval. If the county council, by a vote of three or more, don't approve the budget or don't vote on it, the county executive's budget still becomes the county budget. So there's no checks and balances there. The county council has no real input if what they say doesn't go any further than that. So I do feel that an amendment is necessary there because checks and balances are important. County council cannot do everything that the county executive wants without doing their own legwork investigation and making sure it's the right thing for the residents. Certainly, certainly. Well, it's the primary in May, and if a voter looks at the ballot, they'll see your name, they'll see Jackie Gregory's name, but they'll both have an R in front of it, R for Republican for our, our viewers at home. So both you and your opponent, Jackie Gregory, you guys call yourselves conservatives. You call yourselves Republicans. As conservatives and from a voter's perspective, what distinguishes you from Jackie Gregory and why should people vote for you rather than her? Well, first of all, we both are conservative when it comes to fiscal responsibility. However, that does not mean neglecting the needs of, this, of the county. You still have to take care of it. You have revenues in place to do so, and I don't see that being done. I also have the ability to work with people of different mindsets and opinions. They may disagree with me, but I'm going to be civil, professional, and I'm going to respect what they have to say, listen to it, and evaluate it on my own. Because I know I'm not always right, and I'm not always the smartest person in the room. So you have to be open to other people's opinions. Um, I also publicly support and advocate for, pu for public education, public safety, and all the government services that our county is being neglected with. Um, I have been an advocate publicly for CCPS for a long time, and I will continue to do so. Wonderful. Well, Dawn, before we wrap up here today, is there anything else you just wanted to say, and um, maybe anything on your platform, or maybe something we haven't talked about today? If um, the public has any other questions, they can go to my website. It's branch, the number four, cecilcounty.com. Again, it's branch four, cecilcouncil.com. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Grant Hanley, Dawn Branch, Cecil TV. Have a wonderful night.